All right, so 9-3, geometric sequences. We said this before, you're multiplying and dividing with geometric sequences, um, but like Isaiah so keenly, insightfully noticed, um, is you do have to multiply or divide by a common ratio, okay? Um, that common ratio is gonna be the variable R. Um, what's a ratio? Something over something, right? It's a fraction, essentially. Um, so if you're multiplying by a common ratio, the number two is a ratio. What is two as a fraction? Two over one, right? So it doesn't look like a ratio. It's a ratio. Um, but you can also have the number one half be your common ratio. And then it does look like a fraction, okay? So it doesn't always have to look like a fraction, um, but we call it a common ratio because it truly is a ratio. So basically what you're doing with this, just like we said with the arithmetic, we take the second term and we subtract the first term in an arithmetic sequence. With the geometric sequences, when we're trying to find the common ratio, we'll take a term and we'll divide it by the term in front of it, okay? So you take a term and you divide by the term before it. Now, I always say do the second and the first, but you could do the third and the second. You could do the fourth and the third. It just has to be the term with the term right before it that you're using. The reason I say do those first ones is they're usually nicer numbers to work with, but that's up to you, okay? Um, so let's take a look at these first three here and see arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So we said arithmetic, you have to add or subtract by the same amount. You need a common difference. Geometric, you need to multiply or divide. Um, really, you're multiplying, but it will look like dividing sometimes, by the same amount. And then if you can't do either of those things, it is neither arithmetic nor geometric. Okay? So let's take a look at this first one. Would you say that... 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 is arithmetic or geometric? It's arithmetic. You're adding 5, right? We just did that one. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Arithmetic, okay? Um, you are adding 5 the whole way through. So you have a common difference, right? Common difference. That's arithmetic. Um, how about letter B then? Arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Geometric, why? You're multiplying by two the whole way. So this is geometric. Um, your common ratio would be two, right? We're multiplying by two each time. Um, now, if you didn't see that, here's what you would do. 10 divided by five, 20 divided by 10, 40 divided by 20. 80 divided by 40, right? Every time you take a number divided by the number in front of it, you get the same thing. You get a two every time. So that is your common ratio, okay? Take the number, divide by the number in front of it. There's your ratio. Look at letter C. Neither. That is neither. Um, if we're adding, this is plus one, and then all of a sudden it's plus four, okay? As soon as it's something different, it is not a common difference, okay? Um, so that is not an arithmetic sequence. Um, so then try multiplying. To get from 1 to 2, you would multiply by 2, and then you'd multiply by 3, and then to get to 6 to 7, totally different again. Um, so if the, what you're multiplying by is different, it's not geometric either. So we would say this is neither. It is not geometric. It is not arithmetic. So it is neither. Okay, just like arithmetic, there are formulas for these. Um, the geometric formulas look very similar in the recursive, okay? The recursive is still a sub one equals something, a sub n equals a sub n minus one, and then instead of doing plus the common difference, now we do times the common ratio. Okay, but otherwise super similar, right? It really doesn't look that different at all. Um, the explicit formula looks a lot different. Uh, it's actually simpler, I would say. Um, not as many things to work with. So when you're doing the explicit formula, first of all, this becomes an exponential, right? Because you're taking your common ratio to some power. 
So to the n minus one power is what you're doing. Um, so this is still your first term. This r is your common ratio. And then the n is your term number. Okay. Um, all right, so let's try, just like we did in the last lesson. Here's a set of numbers. What is the recursive formula? What's the explicit formula? And what is the 10th term? So the first thing I would do on these is figure out what is your R? How do you find R? This, the term divided by the term in front of it, right? 33 divided by 11, 99 divided by 33, 297 divided by 99. So your common ratio is three, right? We're multiplying by three each time. Um, so the recursive formula is gonna be a sub one equals what? 11, your first term. And then a sub n equals a sub n minus one. What comes after that? Times three. We are multiplying by the common ratio. So times three, and that will be your recursive formula. Okay, the explicit formula is gonna look like this. A sub n equals, what comes next? 11, your first term, times, um, you may do parentheses, you may do just a little times, I'm gonna do parentheses, um, your common difference to the n minus one power. Now here's a question for you, because this gets done wrong a lot. What are you taking to the power? Is it 33 to the n minus one power or three to the n minus one power? Three, okay? Don't multiply these first and then do the power. You gotta do the power first and then you can multiply by that first term. Um, so just be careful with that. This has to come first, okay? Um, so if I'm looking for the 10th term, yes, you could do the recursive and you could just times three, times three, times three, times three, and you'd eventually get there. It's a lot more work. Or you could just take a 10 and plug it in for n to both of these. So it's gonna be a sub 10 equals 11 times three to the 10 minus one power. So really what power are you taking this to? The ninth power, okay? Um, so 11 times three to the ninth power is really what you're doing. So a sub 10, plug that into your calculator. These calculators are lovely. And you should get 216,513. Bless you. Okay. Questions on that? Yeah, Jada. A sub 1 is always the first. Yep. Always, always. Yep, the common ratio, when it's a ratio, it's always division, right? So it's the second number divided by the first number, okay? Which one above? What are you talking about? Oh, for last lesson? Okay, so ask your question again. The common difference, yeah. And you take the second term minus the first term then. So if you're changing by the same amount adding, it's a common difference, so you take second term minus first term. If it's multiplying to get to the next one, then you do the second term divided by the first term to find your common ratio then, okay? Okay, um, so example three here. It says write the recursive, write the explicit. How do you find your R right now? How do you
do you find R on number three? Yeah, take 100 and divide by negative 1,000, okay? Now, if you plug that into your calculator, 100 divided by negative 1,000, um, you get this, a negative 0.1, okay? Um, honestly, I'm, I don't really care if you leave it like that, if it's a number that's nice like that. If it's a number like 0.1 repeating, you cannot leave it. How do you turn that into a fraction? Math, enter, right? And then that will turn it into the fraction, negative one tenth, okay? So if you get something that's a bad decimal, don't leave it as that bad decimal, turn it into the fraction and then use the fraction, okay? Um, so the recursive formula here, a sub one is what? Negative 1,000 and then a sub n equals your a sub n minus one, that will never change. What operation happens next? Plus minus times divided by times. What are you multiplying by? Negative one tenth, okay? Um, so that's your recursive. The explicit formula, and again, it's just, it's this guy, right? We're just plugging in to that explicit setup. So it's a sub n, equals what? Negative 1,000, right? Your a sub 1, negative 1,000 times what? Negative 1 tenth, your r value, okay? Um, I'm actually just going to turn this into parentheses. So negative 1 tenth to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so when it says give the formula, you should have an n here and an n here. Now, if it said find the 15th term, then you can plug a 15 in. But if it asks just for the formula, the formula should always have n in it and should never have r in it. Okay? So then like negative 1 over 10, should you put that in decimal form or this fraction? When you plug it in? Um, I would I would plug this whole thing in my calculator negative one zero zero zero, oops, and then I would put a parenthesis negative one divided by ten parenthesis to the and then whatever power yeah I would just plug it in as negative one divided by ten. If you plug it in as the like point negative point one you'll get the same answer. But it's just, if it's like a negative 0.1 repeating, you won't get the same answer. So be careful with that. Questions on that? Okay. Um, now, you get to write an explicit formula knowing your information, not knowing the sequence. So they give you a sub 1, they give you r, and then they say find the first term. So first write the explicit geometric formula, okay? Um, notice they tell you information here, right? They say, write the explicit, we have two explicit formulas, geometric, so pick the geometric one, okay? So just the basic formula is this, a sub n equals a sub n minus one. Oh, I lied, sorry, I reverted back to the other one. Um, a sub one times your r to the n minus one, okay? That is the explicit geometric formula. So that's what we're gonna do. Look at what they gave us. A sub one and R. What do you know? That's everything we need. What's your formula gonna look like? A sub n equals two times 10 to the n minus one, right? N doesn't change. N should always be in your formula. Now, they say find the first five terms. So now you can start plugging things in. Um, what's a sub one? Two, they gave it to you. No need to plug that one in, right? They already told you what a sub one was. So a sub two, now you're gonna plug it in. So it's gonna be two times 10 to what power? The first power, right? To the two minus one is two times 10 to the first power. So a sub two is 20, 10 to the first times two, okay? And you can just plug that into your calculator. You can actually plug this into your calculator. I don't even need to see this if you don't wanna give me that, 
okay? Um, it's kind of up to you if you want to do any mental math or not. Um, so a sub 3 is 2 times 10 to what power? The second power. 3 minus 1, right? We're plugging in a 3 for n, is 2 times 10 to the second power. That is not 20 to the second power, right? It is 10 to the second, which is 100 times 2. If you're not sure about that, please plug it into your calculator because your calculator is sure. If you plug it in exactly how you see it, your calculator is going to get that right. That should be 200. Okay. Um, then a sub 4 is 2 times 10 to the 4 minus 1 power, which is really 2 times 10 to the 3rd power. Um, do you see a pattern? 2, 20, 200. If you're just multiplying by 10 each time, you're really just tacking on a 0. So what's your fifth term going to be? 20,000. Okay. And like I said, if you're seeing that pattern, you can just run with pattern too. You don't have to show me all the work every time. Um, but those will be your first five terms. Questions on that? All right, last thing. Um, this looks very similar to arithmetic mean, but also very different. Okay, you're gonna, your problems are going to look very similar. I have two numbers, and I want the geometric mean. But to find a geometric mean, um, you actually did this with me in geometry, those of you that took geometry with me. Um, remember geometric mean, we would always say a over x equals x over b, and we'd cross multiply, and x squared equals a times b till we take the square root of those two numbers. That's what we're doing right now. Okay, the geometric mean, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, the geometric mean is taking your two numbers, multiplying them together, and then square rooting it. Okay, um, so in this case, we're going to take the square root of 20 times 80. Um, you're welcome to just plug that into your calculator. Square root of 20 times 80, if you plug it in separately, that's the square root of 1600. But if you just plug it in exactly like that, it's going to tell you what? 40. Yeah, so your geometric mean of 20 and 80 is 40. Multiply them together, take the square root. Okay? What do you suppose you do in this scenario? Do the middle one first. So you're going to take the square root, okay, to find this guy right here of 19,683 times 243. Okay, plug that into your calculator. What do you get? 2,187. Okay, so that's this one. 2,187. How are you going to find this one? Yeah, Noah. Uh, you wouldn't. Yeah, you can't. There is no good. Um, yeah, there's no good way to find like you can't find the middle and then the like partial because we're multiplying and then taking a square root. It just doesn't work nicely with that. So you'll always have either three numbers or five numbers or seven numbers. Right. So that you could always find what's perfectly in between the others. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay, so for this one, take the first and the third now. It's the square root of 19,683 times 2,187. And just make sure you're multiplying, right? It's easy to try to add because you're used to adding with the arithmetic mean. Geometric mean, you're always multiplying. So plug that in. You will get 6,561. Okay, and then for the last one right here, same thing, the square root of, we're going to take 2,187 times 243, and when you plug that in, you'll get 729. Questions on that? All right. 